Well, Rishi Sunak's government have done it again. The plans to privatize Channel 4 have now officially been cancelled and we ask, what does this mean for the future of state-controlled TV in Britain, particularly the BBC? Another day and another U-turn from this so-called conservative government. Everything changes uh, within minutes these days in Whitehall and in Westminster. This is about what's been going on with Channel 4. The most unnecessary state-controlled channel that we have. Um, I get the intentions that they had initially. And it was supposed to be to, to counter the BBC and focus on the cultural stuff and everything else. But it's 2023 now. It's the 21st century. I'm not really sure why we even have state control TV in a liberal modern democracy. Technically democracy. <laughs> but now we have Michelle Donnellan, DCMS, Secretary of State and Prime Minister Rishi Sunak confirming that Channel 4, they've said, Channel 4 is a British success story and a linchpin of our booming creative industries after review, reviewing the business case and engaging with relevant sectors that I have decided that Channel 4 should not be sold. Firstly, this hugely triggers uh, Nadine Doris <laughs> and Boris Johnson. But this is actually, this was never about Channel 4. This was supposed to be a gateway drug to getting rid of the BBC. Well, getting rid of the license. No one's actually going to get rid of the BBC. It's supposed to be denationalizing the BBC. That's the best word to use. Because apparently, in this country, the word privatize is toxic. Fascinating. Compared to like the rest of the world and other, other cultures where they are desperate to have industries not being controlled or owned by the state. But that's a whole different topic. Let's see what's going on. This is the press release that we have from our British government saying Channel 4 is to remain publicly owned with reforms to boost its sustainability and commercial freedom. I really hate the words publicly owned. It is not publicly owned. It's state owned. It's owned by the state, not the public. What is the public? And this is exactly the whole problem with the whole narrative. The language has been used over the last few decades. Uh, they keep basically dominating certain nice words. But in reality, it means something else. Now, instead of at sale, the government has agreed reforms to help Channel 4 grow and better compete in the age of streaming giants. Yeah, good luck with that, especially when it comes to all the new platforms, all the new Netflixes and, and uh, Disney Pluses and Amazon Primes and everything else. Fine. Plans include allowing Channel 4 the flexibility to make some of its own content and a new legal duty to promote long-term sustainability whilst introducing protections to ensure they continue. Right, okay, so they are now man giving mandates. They are basically giving them orders. So the state is no longer <laughs> going to be just completely out of uh, the management of Channel 4. The state is going to be involved, saying, well, you're going to have to do this, you're going to have to do that. You know, okay, so this is like North Korea now. <laughs> right, a statement from Channel 4 bosses in response to this decision. We welcome the government's decision that Channel 4 will remain in public ownership. This decision provides a firm basis on which to establish the sustainable direction of Channel 4, safely in the hands of the British public and people. The British people. Are you kidding me? What, what sort of say do British people have when it comes to Channel 4? Do we actually have a say on the content? Do we have a say on the model? On anything? No, this is a lie. But this is actually about, as I say, it's not really about Channel 4. The whole thing was supposed to be the beginning of the snowball to start the conversation about the future of the BBC. This was the whole point of what Nadine Doris was doing, despite all her flaws. But now, what's gonna happen? Because 2027 is the deadline for the, the BBC charter and the license. And the plan was supposed to be to start having the conversations now, so that by 2027, we would force the, the BBC to change their model and their funding structure and everything else. And that year is coming up quite fast. We have four years. So, and actually in reality, considering the next two years is going to be wasted because of uh, the upcoming general election. So you're basically gonna have about a year and a half 
after the election two years to actually do something. And I don't think it's going to happen. Especially if Keir Starmer is going to be prime minister, the BBC will stay. 20 to 27, that's the deadline. That's when the charter needs to be uh, reviewed and potentially renewed. And if you renew it, then we are in a bit of a mess because the BBC will be protected for a long, long time and they might even increase the license fee uh, in order to protect it, to be sustainable, to be able to compete with Netflix or Disney+. Plus. I said it here first. We'll see what happens by the year 2027. But it doesn't matter. We have this channel and you guys are going to support us, hopefully. If you like the content, share and subscribe. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.